Hello, Carla from Scrap and Create. Um, before I get too far along with my shaker card, because I've been doing different variations, multiple, <laughs> I think I finally decided on what I want. So this is shaker card is going to be for the front of the album. What you need to do is if you have a square die, if not, you can do this all by hand by using um, a utility knife and cutting out your image. But that is going to be a pain and I never get everything straight. So I wanted to use a square die. I found this sheet. It has four images. The original image I used was this one. I thought that was the right size. So this die cuts the right size of image that I want. And I did that seven times on a 110 pound cardstock. So I cut my window. This this paper here, 110 pound cardstocks, cardstock is six inches um, wide because that's what fits in my die machine, and I wanted to make sure I left enough room on the edges to have a three eighths of an inch width all the way around. So once I have this, it's been cut seven times. I get my paper trimmer or. You can use a utility knife and find three eighths of an inch and cut it this way by um, putting the inner line of the cutout on this black line. And three eighths of an inch is going to be right there. And you can hand cut it all the way around like so this is labor intensive and I can't see that well so cut it and then you have your three eighths of an inch border here but if you can go to your paper trimmer Here's, this is my, this is my three, here's half an inch. This is half an inch. This is three eighths of an inch on my paper trimmer. This is a Cricut. So I'm going to put it right there. And make sure it's lined up straight. Voila do it all the way around just with the paper trimmer much easier than doing a hand trim all the way around get that straight So once you have all your paper pieces cut out, what you're going to do is glue them together. You're going to glue them together and make sure it is the inside that is flush. So just make sure the inside is flush and maybe a little not straight on the outside, but you want that inside to be nice and smooth. So you're just going to get Art glitter glue, put it on. I'm real slow, and though art glitter glue doesn't give you much time, and then adhere it down with art glitter glue. Just make sure it's flush with the inside. Don't worry about lining up the outside. So I'm going to do that with all seven pieces, and once they're all together, I will come back. What you'll end up with, I've already 
glued this one together, you can see how it is nice. Well, maybe you can't see, but it's nice and smooth all the way around this card. That's what you want to do is build up seven layers thick, seven or eight, and then you can put your sequins in here. But first you have to glue all these together. The other thing I did before I put this card in is I got some matte medium and I painted the back side of this card, which is what I did with this one. This is the card I'm going to be using for our, our um, sugar card. I've already painted it. I don't know if you can see the, the matte medium on there. So I painted it all the way around with this matte medium. It's a little bit wrinkled, but it doesn't matter. We're going to straighten it out. If you want to use this matte medium, it's a good idea because it's going to be using this as a frame, so I, the matte medium will make it a little bit stronger. The matte medium in here will protect, protect the paper from the sequins moving up and down or rubbing against the paper. At least that's, that's my thinking. So now we're ready to cut our card. So if you did apply the matte medium, make sure it's completely dry because you don't want to cut through uh, paper that's damp. So you're going to get your die, figure out where you want to place it so it's kind of even. I think it's going to be about right there. And wherever my repositional tape is, I'm going to put this on so it doesn't move and then put it through my die machine. So it went through the die machine. Let's see what we have. Pull this off carefully. Don't want to tear my paper. I never trust repositional tape. Anyway, so there we have it. So now here's our frame. We're going to ink around the edges of our frame. Um, here is our built up base. What we're going to do with this is put it on some black cardstock. So this, this frame, this built up frame is five and a half by five and a half. So what I'm going to do is um, cut a piece here that's five and a half by five and a half and then mount that on that. So I cut my paper five and a half by five and a half. I drew some guide guidelines, this is three quarters, um, three eighths of an inch there and three eighths from the bottom. So when I pull my tape, it will be the same amount of reveal all the way around. There's my tape, I use tape. So I wanna make sure I get it on straight because can't take it off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my tape and get that on. So that is adhered down. Remove my pencil marks. Now you can get your frame. See what side you like best. I think I like this side better. It doesn't really matter. And you are going to adhere that frame down on that black, um, that, that black piece like that. So go ahead and adhere that down. I'm probably going to be using glue again. I hate glue, but it's forms a strong bond and I don't want any tape here that might cause the sequins to get stuck up in here. So I'm going to use my glue and then I will get that down and be right back. So 
I got that on. Burnish that. Don't like glue seepage, but I seem to always get it. Sure there's none on the inside. That looks good. Okay, Whew. now we're on to this part. Now I am going to be backing this on, I have to cut out another, uh, another one of these frames because I want to back it on this. I'm going to back this on one of these frames that we made. So I need to die cut another frame out. Go ahead and ink the inside of this frame and the outside of the frame. I'm going to cut another frame out and be back. So I have my frame cut. Here is the frame for our sugar card. So I'm going to line this up here and then I'm just going to get a sharp pencil and see where I need to cut. That looks pretty good, so I'm just going to draw around here. You don't need to see me doing this. It's, I am so slow. So I think. So there's the outline. I need to trim this. I'm going to go inside that line just a little bit. And the other thing, I'm sure you guys do this, when you start a new project, always get a new blade. I just, I don't even think about it. I just get a new blade because it's not worth it. Just get a new blade. Okay, so now we are going to finally attach this to our base piece. Let me see. I'm sure I traced it some way, so find the way that it fits best. I think that's the best fit. And then I'm going to adhere this down and then we will be applying our acetate. So we have our black piece adhered to the back side. Came out pretty good. I had to do a little trimming um, where it was sticking out, but looks good. Inked all the edges here and on the inside. So this is ready to go. Need to get our acetate on the back. So this is about five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So we're gonna cut a piece of acetate five and a quarter by five and a quarter. I, this is flimsy acetate. I need to get a better, thicker one next time. I don't like this. This is too flimsy. Five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Now with acetate, you need to apply it with score tape. Did I get any? Everything sticks to it, so I'm going to clean it off. So, 
put it there. And what I'm going to do, I just want to see if it fits. I'm going to be applying score tape right around the window, like a quarter inch score tape all the way around. And then I'll apply this because what you don't want is you don't want any of the sequins to be coming underneath this. So I get a quarter inch tape and I'm going to put this all the way around. And if you are applying score tape, just make sure you have overlap. So you put down this score, this side in, lift this up so you can get this one overlapping it. That way you make sure there are no gaps in the coverage of the score tape where the acetate's going to be. So burnish that down real well. And remove the score tape. I think I'm just going to start with one side. So what I'm going to do, I have found some of these, these little balls. I, don't, I found them somewhere and I thought, oh, that looks really cool. Uh, looks just like snow. Let's see if I, and I'm sure there's going to be static on here. No, not too bad, not too bad. So those, um, I do have my little anti-static. So what I normally do is just kind of go around the base. I should have done it before I put my little guys in there. Just a little bit of powder in there. I'm going to put some around. And I have some sequins here that I want to bring in. So I added some other st stuff in there, some snowflakes, um, some sequins, these little guys that look really cool. I think that's enough. I don't want to overwhelm the card. Um, I just want to make a fun element. And gosh, work so hard on this card. If you don't want to make a shake card, just put this picture on the front. Probably be, probably be fine. Get that snowflake in there. So now we need to close it up. So I kind of put powder all around here. I am going to seal it with glue because I don't want. Oops, where's the flower? Got to put the flower with the flower up here. Remember, you got a flower here, got a flower there. So I am going to seal this, this up because once it's sealed, I can't add or subtract from my, from my stuff. And hopefully the, the static will go down once things get rolling. I added some powder to the base of the, the shaker card too. Some of this little powder, which is probably just baby powder, but... So I think that's what I'm going to do, and let's see if that's enough. Just make sure when you're adding the glue, you stay away from the acetate so you don't get any glue spillage into the acetate. So here's our finished card. Hopefully you can see it with the glare there. So it's... It doesn't have a lot of elements in there, so when the album is not, um, you're not shaking it, it 
you can still see that beautiful image back in there. So that is our, our shaker card. And I think it looks really pretty, hard to see with all that glare. But now we need to affix it to our cover. <laughs> 